Hi, my name is Moshe Zussman and I'm a wedding and portrait photographer. And today I'm going to talk to you about posing for wedding photography because I know it's one of the biggest challenges wedding photographers have. So let's jump into a few posing tips. First tip I can give you about posing is to always make sure that you know what you're doing. And the best way to do that is to have a lot of practice. Practice means you pose at home, you pose your friends, you pose your spouse, you pose anyone you want so that when you get to shoot the wedding day, you don't look like you're hesitating. That's why I always recommend doing an engagement session before you get to the wedding. The engagement session is what's gonna make couples really, really comfortable because they already know where you're going with your posing and directing. So as the wedding day starts and we wanna start photographing the bride and groom, we go in when they're getting ready. As soon as they're getting ready and they're done, we're gonna take them out and start doing their portraits. The best thing you can do is scout in advance and look for places that you know will photograph best. I like to work with natural light. If I have to, I will bring in some additional artificial lighting like speed lights or soft boxes, whatever I need to create the look that I planned in advance. You'd always need to scout the place if you have the opportunity and find the best spots with the best backdrops. For example, in this photo, I chose to take the bride out of a room that's really poorly lit and has very boring backdrop right outside into the hall and I photographed her right by the window with beautiful natural light. And what I really like to do is once I have a money shot and it looks great in camera, I'm just gonna turn to the bride, show her the back of the camera and at that point, you'll see a transformation. When they see a good looking photo, they're feeling a lot more comfortable and a lot more secure about themselves. The rest of the day is gonna be a lot easier from that point on. If your bride is wearing a nice dress, a designer dress, or have a very beautiful bouquet, posing them the right way will highlight all those fine details in those items. For example, in this photo, I had a bride stand right by a big door facing a natural sunlight from the outside, which really, really made all the sparkles in her dress just shine. Using C-curve and S-curve for the bride is really important because you're creating a much more fashionable look versus just standing there with the hands hanging down because we all know how nervous the brides are on the day of the wedding. As soon as the groom is getting ready to be photographed after he's done getting dressed, we're gonna take him and give him a few minutes of his own with a lot of attention, some solo shots, making him look really great, very high fashion. And I love to use keywords when I photograph the grooms, which is GQ. That word by itself, when I say it to couples, make them already feel they're gonna be photographed in a high fashion style and that really, really sets the mood. As soon as I'm done with just the groom, I'm gonna bring them together and let them see each other first time. It's called first look. And after that, we get to work. We start photographing the couple. We try to make sure that it's as much fun as possible. I like to keep it fun, but I like to get to work. So I'm gonna pose them and be very assertive, very, very confident. No, I know what works, so I'm gonna make sure that I only exercise the best poses possible. So when I photograph the bride and groom together, I make sure that they always look like they're being on a cover of a magazine, which means I'm not gonna make the groom stand there and just look at me. I'm gonna tell him to put hands in his pockets, keep the thumb sticking out so the hand doesn't just go straight down, which gives him a little pop on the elbow and creates a little separation here, which really looks great with a suit. The bride is always gonna have a curve either a C-curve or an S-curve, depending on the pose itself. And I love having the bride lean one hand on the groom's shoulder. That creates a lot of nice connection between them versus just standing there next to each other. When I photograph the couples, I try to incorporate the background into my images versus losing the background with wide aperture lenses. I think it creates a more creative look, especially if I'm working with very, very unique architecture buildings. If you look at these photos, you'll see that in the same location, I used the backdrop through different compression in the lenses to create three different looks. I have not only the bride and the groom and the entire wedding party with the wide angle shooting from fairly low, but also the bride and her girlfriends and then the groom and the bridesmaids. Different lens compressions create different looks all in the same place. One of the biggest challenges wedding photographers have in posing is posing real large groups. So if you have three or four people on each side, that's okay, you can handle it, you can get creative. But what do you do if you have 10 people or more? You really should have cheat cards. I actually keep mental photos of how I'm gonna pose tall people and rounded people and short people. And I try to create a look that'll work with a large party. So for example, if I have steps in front of me, 
that's great because I can divide people and pose them on the steps, create a pyramid of people. That'll help instead of creating a very, very wide photo that just looks too panoramic. If I don't have those steps, that's fine. I can create more separation in the image by using off-camera lighting. For example, in this photo, I use two speed lights or Q flashes. I use two Q flashes to separate everybody and create a little more edge in the lighting. When I'm posing my people, my brides, my grooms, my wedding party, I try to get some sassiness out of them, show a lot of character and personality. The style that I have is very high fashion. So when people come into my shoots and when they have me photograph their wedding, they're expecting that high fashion look. So GQ and Vanity Fair really speaks to them and it shows in the photos. So in this wedding, I walk into the bride's uncle's house and I realize I have a huge wedding party and nowhere to photograph them. So I scout the house and I look around and I see this room. It had beautiful tall ceilings and a nice orange wall. And I realized there's a huge 600 pound table right in the middle. So we move the table against the wall and clear it a little bit. And all of a sudden I see an amazing room that would look really, really good. But that wasn't enough. I had a huge wedding party and I need to pose each and every one of them. I knew that I definitely don't want to pose them traditionally like everybody else does in a straight line, holding their flowers, looking at the bride or smiling at the camera. I created a different look. I posed each one at a different height. Some are sitting on the floor, some are sitting on a chair, some are standing up. And everybody is doing something just a little different, which all together tied the photo into a very, very dynamic image. So these were a few tips on posing, and I hope you go out and practice as much as you can, because I know when I started, I didn't have a clue about posing, and I was just photographing people from far away with less interaction with them. The difference shows, and the more you practice, the better you will get. So thank you for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.